So we're looking at file sharing from the iPad, whether it be a student sharing their work with another student, maybe a student sharing work with a teacher in order for it to be assessed, or maybe a teacher's created some work on an iPad and will share that with a student. If we're in a iWork file like pages, numbers or Keynote, it's a fairly simple process. We just go up to the spanner up here, click that, and then select the share and print option. And you'll get a list of your choices. If you, want, if you choose the email option, and you'll get a list of alternative formats. So if I'm sending this pages document to another student on an iPad, I'll go with the pages option, presuming they've got pages, of course, which I think costs about $10.50. Likewise, if I was sending this to a teacher with a Mac, I'd go with the pages option. So for pages files, keynote files, it's a fairly simple process. Generally, those files can be emailed directly from iPad to teacher. Not necessarily the case when we're dealing with movie clips. So let's say you've got your class to create an iMovie. And let's say it's a little bit too big for email. What you need to do is, or what the student needs to do, is hit the share option down the bottom here. And then the student will get a list of options. Now, if you don't like any of these options, try Dropbox. But notice it's not giving us the Dropbox option from iMovie. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to select the camera roll option. So get the student to save it to their camera roll. So now the file has been saved to the camera roll of the iPad. So the student's going to need the Dropbox app, which is a free app from the App Store. So get the student to open this app. Then they're going to hit the plus option to add a file. Then they'll be able to find that file somewhere on their camera roll. So students and teachers, be warned, this process could take a while and it doesn't always work, depending on the size of the file. If it does work, once the file has been successfully loaded to the Dropbox account, get the student to hit the share option and pick your poison in terms of how they're going to share that link. Email is probably going to be the one teachers are going to prefer unless you've got a class Facebook page, or they could tweet it if they've got a Twitter account. There's other options there. So the student is going to email the teacher the link of their file. So the teacher gets an email with a link of the video. And here's a important strategic point. As long as a student retains the file in their Dropbox account, the teacher will be able to access this link, this link. If the student deletes the file from their Dropbox account, then obviously the teacher can't view the file. So teachers, you need to tell your students how long they need to retain that file in their Dropbox account before you've actually marked it. So again, a bit of strategic direction is required here. Now, let's just say that you're having issues with Dropbox. Here's another alternative, YouTube. Now, there are many students at the secondary level that have YouTube accounts. There's many students out there who actually have created files and posted them to their YouTube account. I know this sets off alarm bells in terms of privacy, but there is a privacy setting on YouTube. So when you load a movie clip to your YouTube file, you have the option of making it public or private. So what the student will do is when they choose the YouTube option for sharing the iMovie, they're going to keep it on the default setting of private. Unless, of course, you want them to make it public, 
that might need to be something you need to sort out with your school in terms of where you stand for on terms of school policy because there are there are quite a few variations amongst school policy on that type of matter. So I'll leave that to you to sort that one out. So here's a screen capture of my YouTube account. All these YouTubes, these are public. This icon means public. So I've got my views here, etc. This one here is private. It's only been viewed by one person because I sent that file link to a um, colleague to view. So I'm just showing you evidence that if you put it on private and keep it on private, no one's going to see it except for the person who, or the pe people who are invited to view that clip. So again, loading files to YouTube can take a while depending on the size of the file. So this might be an overnight job. But what the student will do once they've actually successfully managed to get their um, file on YouTube, and I've got over 80 files on YouTube, I've never had one knocked back in terms of it being too big, they're going to hit the share the video option and that's going to give them a URL and again they can paste that into an email, tweet it, whatever. So then you the teacher will get the email with the link, you'll access it and again be able to view it. So hope this has helped. Again you need to be a little bit strategic in the way you manage this, teachers, particularly in terms of the time lag of a student actually finishing the final product and then for them sharing it with you. Often this will be an overnight process unless you want to actually physically take the iPad off the student and then mark it there on the spot. But again, is that going to inconvenience the student? So that's going to be a little bit of strategy that you need to get your head around. Cheers all.